afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you. I trust that you are having an absolutely gorgeous day. Today, we are in the presence of greatness because today we feature two incredible men who are sticking their hands up in the fight against women and children abuse. First up is one of the absolute legends of South African music. He rose to fame in 1986 with the famous band Peto, and his career spans more than 30 years. It is, of course, the absolute legend, Ringo. Then we sit down with Matthew Mensa. He's a philanthropist who is shedding light on issues that affect South Africa, such as abuse, hunger, and also cancer awareness. He will be sharing his story with us. And on that note, head over to our Facebook page and share your thoughts. We are asking you today, if you saw or knew of a woman in your community getting abused, would you get involved or rather not do anything, step back and feel like it's not your place? Please let us know on our Facebook page or tweet us at Afternoon Chat using our official hashtag, uh, hashtag Afternoon Express. Plus, we have um, style photographer uh, Trevor Stearman on the show as well. He recently launched his very first exhibition and we were lucky enough to attend. We will be showing you all of that a little bit later on the show. In the kitchen, however, mm, <laughs> Not just great guests on Afternoon Express, great food too to get you inspired for those incredible meals you want to be making. And Clem has got two of them for us today. And uh, one healthy one and one that's just got in the name tells you that it's one of those ones that's just decadent. Yeah, but you know what? It's National Amaguinia Day and that's yeah, a decadent one. Okay. And we're going all out today. We're going to do three different types. Okay. Maybe I should, should I tell you what they are? Yeah, please do. Give okay. us a little sneak peek. Like, cool. What do they entail? Like, what kind of... We're going to go chicken and acha. Little oh, traditional. Oh, oh, okay. Pulled chili beef and pickles. Oh. And my favorite, boltong butter. Bultong that's the... Butter yeah, butter that's pesto. the amaguinia. But first, because you're not treated enough, we're going to do some cauliflower-based pizzas. Okay. It's going to be crazy. Great. So for those who are banting and always want to know on Afternoon Express, what have we got to cater for you? Well, we've got banting pizzas on the way for us on Afternoon Express. Let's get to our guests on the show. First up, he's one of South Africa's longest standing and best loved Afro pop stars. He burst onto the scene in 1986 with his band Petal. He spent the early part of the 90s doing session work for big names like Huma Sekela, uh, Teddy Pettengrass, uh, and even did work on the Lion King soundtrack, one of my favorite movies of all time. And as a solo artist, his third album, Son Della, uh, which was released in 1997, went double platinum and secured his place among the greats. It's Ringo Madlingozi. I mean, I think our viewers at home just want to just want to look at you and just want to have a little piece of you for the next hour. Oh, Welcome yeah. to Afternoon Express. Thank you for having me. Can we first be glad that your style has improved you know, since uh, <laughs> what is going on? No, can no, we just... No, 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 no. I, I, was, I was very young. <laughs> You're still so very young. Now, I always thought my shoe game was strong, but your shoe, those shoes are amazing. Oh, 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 another you, level then. <laughs> it's like a 3D artwork. <laughs> Let's start right at the beginning, because you've had such a colourful career. Mm. Sure. But you actually started off, I think, as a drummer. But I want to mm. know, where did the name Ringo come from? Um, well, my mother used to say that I used to, you know, bang inside her in a play, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, and, you know, the, at that time, the group that they were listening to at that time was, you know, the Beatles. Yeah, so, Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr. So, yeah. you know, not that I'm, I'm named after him, but uh, I was also a drummer. Yeah. In fact, I'm still a drummer. Right. Yeah. So obviously, it's a birth name you were given was Ringo. It was something that was that your parents gave you as birth name. It didn't become well, a stage name for you. Well, and and uh, you know, people from Cape Town, they they, they always call me Ringo. Uh, you know, it's uh, so, but it's not on my uh, birth certificate. ID document. No, no, no. What no. is? Uh, well, it's it's, uh, it's the the the. the uh, you know, I'm I'm always been uh, you know been called Ringo all the time. Yeah. So it's more like. Uh, uh, Exactly. It's the name that, that like stuck with me. And, so you uh, were literally born playing the drums. Oh, for sure. But how did you then adapt that to a musical to, career? To, yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, I, I used to come back from school and uh, in my grandmother's backyard, I would 
play, you know, I would, I would have my makeshift drums, you know, mm, uh, pots and create, create buckets. Create them, and you know, and play and, and sing it, all the, the hit songs of that time. Remember, at that time, it was, uh, yeah, in Cape Town, it was uh, uh, Radio Huya Wop, Good Hope. Uh, oh my gosh, yeah, 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 yeah we and, both and, work for Good Hope. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the... the Radio 5, Radio 5, all, you know, all those, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was, so I would, I would sing all those, you know, even adverts. I would yeah. sing them, you know, the, 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 the jingles. taglines, mm, jingles, yeah. you know. Uh, and I guess it was when I started to teach myself how to sing. Yeah. And uh, even during school, I was, you know, uh, well, during breaks, yeah. uh, you know, girls were like, Ringo, please can you sing that song? Yeah. Well, you know, every time I would be, you know, humming, singing a song and, uh, you know, girls like, hey. <laughs> well, <laughs> girls <laughs> certainly do have an effect. Uh, well, you've got a music, uh, an effect on girls with your music. I mean, you live are uh, singing all these love <laughs> songs and I think swooning at all the women in the audience. I mean, what kind of energy must transpire at your live events? I mean, that must be quite intense. Well, you, you, you know, uh, the, 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 I also learn from uh, what Ringo is singing about. Yeah. You know, uh, because... Uh, you know, I, I know that, you know, sometimes, you know, guys like, hey, Ringo, you're putting pressure on us, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to get anything yeah, now? Yeah. Then, every, every time you think about this thing, you know, girls like, but you don't do what Ringo is, you know, is, yeah. he says he's doing. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, so um, I think about uh, things that, that uh, you know, women would love to be, you know, told, mm. said yeah. to them all the time. And more like, oh, beautiful eyes, you wonderful. But do you follow through with that in real life? Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm learning <laughs> from him. Exactly, so it clearly worked out for you. I mean, it, it worked out. You've got a whole bunch of kids as well, so cl clearly you managed. Do you play your own music in the background when you are preparing for the next child to come along? <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Wow. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what is your creative process, though? Because, I mean, you play the drums as well. So yeah. do you play the drums on all of your, uh, all of your albums? No, 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 no. no. I, I, I make sure that I get the best uh, people who can you know, play each instrument. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I always, you know, look out for, for uh, you know, the, the, the best I can find at that time. Yeah. But I, 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 you know, with, during the, 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 the pre-production, Mm. When I'm doing things, you know, on my own, I mm. program drums, program bass, the way it is, then yeah. I get people to live my music, you know, they, they take it out and, and, and put themselves yeah. on it. And exactly. What about the big collaborations that you've done over your life? Because, I mean, you've got to work with some of the best of the best over the, your, your career. That's oh, Dr. Oliver Mtukudzi. Yes. I mean, that was amazing. You know, uh, Into so Yum cool. is like just the best song in the world. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how did that whole thing come about and what is it like well, working with each other? It's two big names like well, that. Um, you know, we happened to be under the same uh, uh, management at that time. So he was en route to London. So uh, he came to the office and then I drove him back to the airport. Mm. So I was playing this new song. Man, I've got this song, I love it. So he said, man, I love, can I put myself in it? I said, no, but it's out already. He said, yeah, yeah, but you know. We do it. And then when he came back, uh, no, no, no. Uh, now it, he was coming back uh, from London to Zimbabwe. Mm. So. Still heard about that time. So uh, I said, man, let's go to the studio while, you know, you're here. So we got there, organized uh, you know, three girls that could speak Shona to mm. sing, you know, and uh, yeah, we did the song, we put his guitar and all that, and then he, he left. A week later, you know, I called him, man, let's listen to this. Uh, I was like, wow, man, sure. it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, his, his energy, you know, I mean, he's been there, he's, he's got yeah, about like 60 mm. albums, you know, under yeah. his it's name. It's insane. You know? Yeah. Now, just speaking about celebrating your career and celebrating your music is also celebrating your life. You're also a proud father to three amazing children. Yeah, yeah. And I think you've got two sons and a little girl. You know, it being Women's Month, I want to ask you, what kind of men do you want your sons to become? And what kind of man do you want your daughter to sometimes choose, to choose for herself in her life? Well, you know, uh, I always, you know, tell them that... Uh, what, who you are, yeah. you know, who you are. Is, if you, you must always make sure that uh, you treat the next person the way you want it to be treated. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, it's, it's not like you, when you have a woman, yeah. she's yours, you know, you, you own her and all yeah. that. You know. mm. Be with someone who add value to you so that yeah. you also add value to her, you yeah. know. And, uh, uh, but I, I, would, I would never know, you know, mm. what kind of people they, they would end up being. Yeah. But uh, as far as I can see now, they, they, they're still fine guys, you know, and, and they, awesome. they, they, people don't report bad things about them. Yeah. 
you know, and, uh, and, and, and I don't hear anything bad about them too, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so I believe that they are on the right track. Well, they've obviously had a very good role model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <indeed. laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. We cannot wait to hear from, more from you and, of sure. course, to hear your performance as well. You're an absolute legend. <laughs> We've got more coming up from Ringo later in the show, but after the break, we get into the kitchen where Clem has a great way to satisfy your pizza craving without all those dangerous <laughs> carbs. Mm. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3. And I'm very excited today because who says you need to eat bland food when you're banting? We've got the perfect banting-friendly recipe for you to share with your friends and family. We all love a good pizza, as some people call it. For us, pizza. And with the help of Old Gold, we're making cauliflower base bite-sized pizzas. This recipe is as simple as make it, taste it, love it, and share it. Who are these people that say pizza? It's those friends of mine from like Cape Town. It's such a Cape Town <laughs> thing. <laughs> Sorry, can I have the can I have the pepperoni pizza, please? Yo, the phone lines are lighting up. Cape Town's <laughs> calling it. We're like, what? No, it's my friends, particularly my friends who you know have grown up in very English. You know, went to good good high schools uh, and uh, calling it pizzas. No, uncultured. Okay. We don't call anyway, it pizza. So let's get started. Like every good pizza is only as good as its sauce. Am Stunning. I right? Yes. Let's get started with that sauce. So we're using beautiful all gold diced tomatoes today. And what I love is the consistency and the quality is always inside the can. Every time you pop that lid, it's gonna be inside there. Stunning. Let's just start right there. Okay, so while you're using the, obviously the cans from All Gold, if you guys wanna get the details for this recipe, um, it's as simple as going onto your, your mobile device, you just send an SMS to 33650, and you use the keyword gold, right? You just type gold into the text, and you send that to 33650, it'll cost you one round 50, and the free SMSs don't apply, and you'll receive a return SMS with all the details for this recipe, and be able to make it. It's one of those ones you can keep for a lifetime. Absolutely. Learning to make a really good tomato base for a pizza, you'll use it all the time. Absolutely. So what I've got in here is our diced tomatoes. How easy? No need for chopping. Lovely. But then what are these then? Because I saw these. 
Thanks for asking. Uh. So you obviously got the plain tomato flavor right to all the yeah. tomato goodness. But if you wanted to add more flavor to it, instead of going and chopping a whole lot more, they actually come in varieties already. So we've got some with chili, some with olives already, some with some spiciness. So you actually picked up one that you like. Uh, you like earlier, yes. right? Yes, I'm a particularly big arrabbiata fan, which is a which is a tomato and chili. So it adds a like, nice bit of flavor to it, which mm -hmm. I'm very excited about. So tomato, chili, arrabbiata is my, one of my faves. Cool. So, I'll so how about we add your favorite one? Stunning. Because just because it's you, you know what? Let's I just like do it. you, Clem. So while that's busy cooking away nicely, I'm going to add some basil to it. I like adding basil while I'm busy cooking and at the end. So you get like nice flavor. Freshness and then also the cooked down version. How much must I put? That's enough. Okay. Again, pizzas, I think it's totally up to you. Cool. So there we go. Beautiful sauce. You can let that cook down nicely oh, with the Worcester sauce and sugar so that's good. in there. Mm, I hope you at home can smell this on your television. There's all that basil <laughs> sweetness. is amazing. Wow. All right. So what you're going to end up with is a beautiful sauce like this. Delicious. Now let's talk about rich. the... Yeah. So, so delicious. I mean, I can smell it from here. Mm. It's insane. So what I want to do now is talk about the bases. So summer's coming. Yes. Right? We're all being a little concerned about it. Oh, we've all been eating all of the pasta and the pizza. Put that away. Sorry. Okay, let's talk about the bases. Pasta bases over here. Gotcha. Let me tell you how I've made them. So you can hold that for a second. It's cauliflower based. It's not just a trend. It's super delicious. It's tasty. It works every single time. So what I've got over here is some cauliflower rice. Okay? All it is is cauliflower. You can either finely grate it. Okay. Or just pop it in your blender and zzz, zzz, Zip it up a bit, yeah. There we go. It. Okay. Really great. Come out to clean there. Free range eggs going in. Uh -huh. Just like that. Some pecorino. I like I like when you say these Italian ingredients. You always add a bit of an accent. I always add the accent with Italian words. I don't know what it is. It's like my name. I can't say Danello. Like it would irritate me. Danello. No. no. Danilo. 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 No, yeah, just go for it. Okay, this one? <laughs> Some cheese. It's just um, mozzarella. It's a white cheddar. Mozzarella. mozzarella, mozzarella. Okay, cool. cool. You're gonna give it a good mix. It actually comes together, binds up nicely. Mm -hmm. What you're gonna do is you're gonna turn them into all patties. Oops, like you would just like that. And then, and then you pop out. these into the oven for about 20 minutes so they go nice and crispy. And look at that, nice and pliable as well. And you just start building. Boom. Cool. Sauce, Dan, I'll do Tomato the sauce for top. both. And you just go and add your favorite toppings. I'm gonna make mine out of the salami that you got to, your, your, yeah. your pepperoni. There we go. Pepperoni. And what's Actually, really great is once the sauce is in, it goes into the oven. Okay. And when it comes out, it looks super delicious. Super malty and delicious goodness. Yummy. Do I get to eat that today? That's uh, not just TV food, I can eat that? You, you want to go for it? Amazing, I'm going to. I'm going to okay, steal cool. a little slice from it just now. Well, well I go and taste the little pizzas that we've created already in the ovens. What you guys can do is take a quick little recap for those who missed out on any of the steps along the way. These are honestly so healthy and delicious at the same time. You'll definitely want to share this recipe. So for more of the All Gold inspired recipes, visit allgold.co.za. It's as simple as make it, taste it, love it, and share it. Mm. How good? So good. Mm. I could eat two of these a day. Anyway, beside the point, All Gold is giving you the chance to win an All Gold hamper filled with variety of delicious All Gold goodies. 
To stand a chance of winning, all you need to do is simply upload a video or picture of you making your favorite all gold inspired recipe using the tomato products. Don't eat it like I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> post it on the Afternoon Express Facebook page. Use the hashtag make it, taste it, love it, and you could win. Now, after the break on the show today, we're back in the kitchen, but this time we've got something for those who are not or aren't uh, looking to avoid the carbs. We're taking traditional and making it even more traditional. It's Fed Cook with Biltong Butter. We'll be right back. Hey, it's good to have you back with us on Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3 and taking all your comments on our social media accounts, so keep sending them through. It's also almost the downhill towards the weekend, and that starts on Friday, which means it's time for Winner Home. SA's premier interior design reality competition proudly brought to you by Private Property. Now, if you vote for your favorite design duo, you could win incredible prizes in the bi-weekly giveaway. The latest prize up for grabs is a Grower Smart Control rain shower system. It's valued at over 11,000 Rand. So get your entries in now and stand a chance of not only winning the bi weekly prize, but you also get automatically entered into the grand prize draw, a home of your very own at the Eye of Africa Gulf and Residential Estate. This estate comes, uh, well, this, uh, this homes come with finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone and premier appliances by Grindic to the total value of 3 million Rand. So take a look at how you can enter. This is your chance to win the home you've always dreamed of. SA's favorite interior design reality competition, Winner Home, sees three design duos transform empty spaces into lavish homes. And one of them could be yours. To enter, visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo. 
put yourself in line to win amazing prizes in the bi-weekly draw and automatically be entered for a chance to win the grand prize, your choice of one of three fully designed homes in the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate in the south of Joburg. The finished property will include luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, as well as premier home appliances by Grundig with a total prize value of more than 3 million rand. Competition details plus T's and C's can be found on the private property website. Watch the breathtaking properties come to life as the design drama unfolds and stand a chance to win the biggest prize on South African television, your very own dream home. Clover Fresh Milk is way better. Made with love by Clover. Now, Fetkuk is such a traditional South African dish that most of us feel quite nostalgic when we taste it and remember our grandmothers, aunts, mothers or family gatherings. Fetkuk is wonderfully simple to make and can be enjoyed with butter, jam, cheese, mm, or filled with savoury or curried mince, biltong, poloni, acha, anything else that you think would taste wonderful. Today, Clem will be showing us some of his favourite fillings. Now, Clem, when it comes to fake cook, you know what I really, really miss? Tell me. My university metabolism, <laughs> because Fed Cook was affordable and it was something that we could buy every single day at university. There were slappy Fed Cooks mm -hmm. filled with mince. Oh, if anyone studied at Rao, a Betty R R E, you will know and you will remember that nostalgia on those fit cooks with, with the mince. With min mince. Okay, so I hope I'm gonna do you proud with my fillings today, but first you've got to get started on that dough. So okay. you got some cake flour, super yeah. easy. I'm actually gonna ask you to do this for me. Some sugar can go in there. Ooh. And okay, then you're trusting right me yep. with the dough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some sugar. olive pride olive oil. Yeah. There we go. Some olive pride olive oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some yeast. Ooh, which one is that? That one. Here we go. Okay. And I'll do the salt and pepper, and you can add a little bit of water. I'll say half that bottle first of water in the crack. There right. we go. You go. Just oh, like yeah, that. and then you've got to mix it. Hey. And you've got to mix it until it comes to a beautiful, beautiful dough ball. You can add a little more. And is it true that I've got to throw it into the well? Uh, and then you fold just, it into the I just the try well. to aim for the bowl. As long as I get the water <laughs> in the bowl, I'm good. So that's the thing. So what you can do is... Every Typical. single yeast dough does need time to rest, okay? Okay. So that's going to go okay. away. Once it all comes together like a ball, like yeah. a ball, sorry, let that go to rest, and we're going to get this beautiful dough over you've here. you've got to let it rise. You yeah, have to let it rise, it. yeah. Fabulous. So what you're going to do is you're going to break off a little piece. I'm going to break mm -hmm. off a piece for you. Yeah. There you go. You can have a small one. Thank you. And I'm going to have a not-so-small one. Yeah. Oh, it's the same size. Okay. We're going to practice our tiger claw. Remember this. Ti oh, okay. Tiger claw. Show me your tiger claw. Just like okay. that. Okay, cool. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. So you put your dough down okay. and you're going to go down on your ball. Tiger claw. And when okay, you're done, yeah, I got this. you're going to have a beautifully shaped, perfectly round bun. Yeah, mine really um, didn't. That's fine. You know what I it mean, is? It's your bling. Yeah, that's true. That's it. Okay. So <laughs> Don't do this at home with jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> I've okay. got some oil, um, olive fried olive oil, which actually we can deep fry in it. Did you know that? Okay. Which is really great. Cool tip is if you can pass the olive pride to me real quick. If your oil is too hot, yes, that's the one, that's the one, the, the one that you had now. There we go. If your, olive, if your oil's too hot, don't yeah. just turn down the heat and pray it's going to go down. It's going to take forever. Rather add more oil. Oh, smart. Okay, and it's going to immediately bring down the temperature of your oil. So add a little Wonderful. bit to your pot, just like that. And now we've got the right temperature. Amazing. Let's go in with our oh, dough balls. We're getting deep with our, our little... Fit cook. Balls in here. And if you want this recipe and all of the details, all you need to do is SMS the keyword clover to 33650. I highly recommend this one because it looks like it's going to be mighty tasty. There we go. There you go. Awesome. So, talk about the side real quick. I've got some chili slow cooked beef with pickles. Okay, okay. that just looks yeah. too good to be true. I've got some chicken and acha and yeah. real simple. I'm going to do this now. I'm just going to add some softened butter with some bultong dust. Bultong Butter. Why have we never? How, how okay, has I'm nobody doing, done that before? Yeah, that's so easy. <laughs> so that's going to be our three toppings for the day. Amazing. Butter going in. Bultong powder. Yeah. And I'm going to start mixing. Once it all comes together, done. Two ingredients. Imagine this over popcorn. I just had that idea right now. What? This over popcorn. Oh, amazing. Oh, I actually think I've done that before. Oh, no. Well, because at one point popcorn <laughs> was my thing. Like, it was all I would eat. All so, right. like, yeah, I tried everything on it. Cool. So now you can definitely grab your favorite side and go, go crazy. Okay, so we cut it in half. We fill it with those fillings and that's it. Done. 
That is phenomenal and oh so easy. This is definitely something that you can do at home. In fact, here's a quick recap. Loma Fresh Milk is way better. Made with love by Clover. <laughs> okay, this is amazing. I've had so much fun filling these delicious joys of, of Fit Cook. But, um, okay, this one, I put the pulled beef uh -huh. with the utter, and I think I'm going to need a little... I'm going to need a guinea... Uh, what's it called? A guinea pig. <laughs> okay, someone with a big mouth. Danilo, come on. I know you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think guinea pigs make. I don't know what understand. noise they're doing. How am I going to fit this in on television? I'm really bad at talking and eating at the same time. Mm. Oh yes. I mean, yeah, that's that's a little bit. Oh wow! Less. It's the only way to do it. How, How delicious, delicious is that? Oh my goodness! Mm. I cannot wait to taste mine. But I'm going to be doing that during the ad break where you don't get to see me opening it. After the break, we check out the first exhibition by style guru and art photographer Trevor Stearman. He is amazing. Plus, we also meet Matthew Menser, a man who is shedding light on women and children abuse. And don't forget to ask, uh, answer our question on Facebook. So head over and share your thoughts with us. We're asking, is society doing enough to combat woman abuse. We'll be right back. Celebrate
A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3 and I'm so loving reading through all of your comments on social media. Hashtag Afternoon Express. We're going through every single one of them. Now, renowned photographer and stylist Trevor Stierman has just launched his first solo exhibition at the Hazard Gallery in Joburg. It's a series of documentary photographs taken in Swakopmund, Namibia and Kwandebele. And we were very lucky enough to attend the official opening to the public. Celebrated photographer Trevor Stierman has entered a new realm of his career with his first solo exhibition called Home, a collection of photographs of Ovi Himba woman and Ndebele initiates. The reason why I chose to focus on the Ovi Himba and the Ndebele culture is when Ndebele culture is so bold and bright and beautiful and it inspires me. And I guess I kind of gravitated to the Himba because of the similarity between the Himba and the Dwana people. And I was raised Dwana. And having both the cultures in one exhibition, it is not to say that they're the same, but it is a matter of celebrating the difference. I chose the title Home because our bodies are our first homes, yet there are spaces that are very unfamiliar. And home is such a close thing to my heart. It is a place where I don't often go. However, it is a feeling that I always carry with me. Whenever things fall apart, I always fall back to that feeling of home. I think what Trevor's done with this show is really beautiful. That he's, he's gone to cultures which aren't his own, but he's found that space, that home in their culture, and connected it with a home which is his own relationship with home. Trevor began this process a long time ago, over a year, and he's been visiting these places and these people repeatedly. And then very close to the exhibition, he lost all of the work. His laptop was stolen, and with it, all of this work that he'd been building up through this time. And what happened was he, he, he went back into a space, which was maybe what he calls home, went very quiet, and then went back and reshot. So for me, one of the most powerful elements of this show is that he returned to something like a memory and found it, but found it in a completely new way. And it, it adds so much nuance to the show. Having had my laptop stolen just three weeks before the opening of the show, having had lost all my work, it forced me to realize that sometimes having nothing is everything because I'm standing here with a full show of completely new words, a new perspective and a newfound meaning and love for what I do. I feel like it has connected me deeper with who I am and I think that is the most special and sacred thing I've learned from the loss of my work. Each shot that you see here, I was there. I was the driver most of the time while he's filming, while he's shooting, getting all the stories, collecting all the stories, aiding them so that today you guys can see them on those walls. We're about telling stories, we're about getting people looking back and actually realizing where they come from and where they're going. And you can't do that without hope. So we bring it home. The one thing that I liked about Trevor's work is that it was able to cross boundaries within the African contest because he wasn't only talking about South Africans in his work, but other cultures and traditions within Africa. So it was a great perspective on tradition and culture and also using photography to be able to tell stories. I'm very excited for Trevor, first of all, because um, he's been an influencer on social media and we're usually always seeing them like on our gadgets and now finally it's on like an actual print. So it's exciting to see that and also the fact that he spent so much time documenting like culture and also just um, different tribes. It's nice to see that and to be educated, so I'm very excited about it. The pieces I've seen today are really immaculate. It's, it's beautiful, I love it. The photographs speak, speak louder than just the photograph. It speaks of concepts like westernization um, with a woman's phone being on her side. It's amazing pictures that just shows you where Africa is going to and it's beautiful. What I love about uh, Trevor's work, it is very authentic. He's always authentic, he's always African, he's always draining the signature of his pictures out of this world. What I'd like people to take away from the exhibition is for them to get a better understanding of who they are and 
to kind of find home within themselves and home in others as well because I believe I was able to juxtapose two different tribes who have completely different narratives. However, their kind of difference is so powerful. It kind of unites the two cultures and having had moved beyond the South African borders to capture the work, it also highlights the importance of us becoming one as Africans and for us to understand that borders are imaginary lines that are made by, by humans and that we have to be humane, to be human to each other. The exhibition runs until the 24th of September and is a wonderful way to celebrate the beauty of our diverse cultures and that our heritage is part of being home. Wow, what an absolutely beautiful Squizzit. exhibition. What Yo. a talented, talented man. But now we are joined by a man who has made it his mission to help those in Africa who, who, to help those in Africa who need it most. His name is Matthew Menser. He grew up in Denmark to a Danish mother and a Ghanaian father. And his journey of philanthropy started in West Africa at the UN. And over the years, he has championed a vast number of humanitarian campaigns, including the Stop Child Hunger Campaign and the first National Breast Cancer Awareness Campaign in Nigeria and Zimbabwe. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you very much. We're so happy to have you. You've had such a colourful life mm. and you've lived all over the world. What brought you back to Africa? Well, um, well, being like, you know, mixed, my dad is from Ghana, my mom is from Denmark and growing up in Denmark and, and also, of course, in London where I studied, um, I always knew that I was going to move back home. Um, and growing up, I, I used to only eat like the African food and but my brother, who is much darker than me, he would eat all the European food, but I would have like this <laughs> strong interest. So I knew that at some point I was going home and mm -hmm. being West African, normally we would go, go home afterwards, we finished studying. Yeah. But listen, you look like one of those typical guys who belongs in a music video uh, for Classic Man. Like you, you dressed impeccably, your life was going towards university, you studied marketing, you looked like you were going towards the corporate world and then this philanthropy stuff started to happen. I mean, how, how did that whole transition take well, place? Well, um, actually I was, as, as I was studying PR marketing um, and when I came back to West Africa, I first moved back to Ghana and then in, in Nigeria where I grew up uh, like nine years. And I had the opportunity, I was working with commercial PR and then I had the opportunity to come and do a campaign in Liberia and that kind of changed the direction of my life. Um, I went to Liberia as part of the end of the war there um, and did a peace campaign. And that was really the first campaign that I was handed over to, to do and it became a, quite a big success. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, I was introduced to a lot of different orphanages and a lot of those kids had their arms cut off and so on. And wow. that's, that's when I kind of felt that I could do more than just commercial mm -hmm. PR, but I, I want to do something that would give me fulfillment, but also make a difference for other people as well. And you certainly have. I think it was you who did the first idea for the first campaign throughout Africa for breast cancer and cervical cancer yeah. awareness. Like, do you think that awareness has increased, I suppose, in a continent where we've got really limited resources? Well, um, the, the key thing is, is, um, is obviously the awareness. Um, yeah. that's, that's what really like, creates the, the, um, the impact. And also as well, like we had a big problem with polio in, in West Africa and it kept coming back because we were not able to contain, contain it. And, and for us, it was about creating a lot of awareness. And that comes when you do a, a complete national campaign. And, and for me, I was lucky to be part of the best cancer mm. campaign, as you mentioned, in Nigeria, which was a massive one mm. with the former first lady there. So, yeah. yeah. A lot of people might see your, your stuff on Instagram or, or see the life that you live when you're mm. dressed impeccably, you, you're posting beautiful photos of these children. And, and I always want to know the intention behind that. I mean, when you're doing such good work, often you want to be able to share that and people assume that the sharing of that work has to got to do with a, a sense of ego. And mm. it doesn't seem like that's at all part of your, your, your makeup. What, what what does drive this love for, for people? I mean, you, you encountered it well, once and then... Well, I mean, the thing is, first of all, I always dress like this, so I wouldn't start dressing in a different I way. I wouldn't then, change that yeah, you. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but then, then you would be, be fake. And also for me, like working with young kids, especially like you know, when you're working with, with uh, young boys as well, um, if you wanted to create the image of, of, of treating people with respect, it's also yeah. about how you dress yourself to, exactly. around them and for me I wouldn't dress down because I'm going to be around kids I want them to also to especially young kids inspire yes and and one of my very good friends um, Hussein who started this program which I'm also part of uh, called African Gentlemen where we would work with kids in Soweto for example yeah. and we were doing bicycle rides in in suits also for them to understand it's not something that should be 
foreign to them, you know, um, yeah. that you should be dressed up in a suit to go to work because it doesn't matter where you come from. You can be anything you want. You can be a lawyer and so on, but you also have to be able to feel that it's not something that's too far away from you. Yeah. Yeah. That even if you're in Soweto, to, oh, I can only do it if I live in Santa. No, it, it doesn't. It's not like that. Some of the most mm -hmm. smartest kids that I come across comes from areas like Alex in in Johannesburg or, or Soweto, etc. You know. Yeah. So it's about taking away the ignorance and also be able to treat people with respect and equal. I love um, that. But but for me, working with these orphanage campaigns, um, I started off before you had anything called Twitter and Instagram and so on like that. You know, and and for me, um, I used Instagram my my pace as a to, to create awareness and also because. Those campaigns I do for the orphans campaign, and especially the home in, in downtown Johannesburg, which is a girl for it's a home for girls rescued from child trafficking, yeah. and that's something that I do with my own funds. So a lot of times to be able to sustain it, you would also ask other people to come and help bringing yeah. blankets or food and so on like that. You know, because yeah. I don't champion the causes and then yeah, people yeah, exactly. just rally around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do such remarkable work, especially with that girls' school mm. as well in Johannesburg. Thank now you. you're also developing an app. Mm. Tell us about that. That's exciting. Well, it's actually a, a law firm that came up with this app, um, which they asked me to be on, come on board called the Court Roll, um, which would help women who've been abused, no matter where they are in, in South Africa, uh, because it's been rolled out here in South Africa as well, um, which is live now, so you can actually download it now. And all those lawyers that are on that Court Roll will be able to give you legal advice for wow. free. Um, so. So, uh, and that's the problem that you know you have a lot of like you no know, women who's vulnerable who might be in areas where it's not common to find a lawyer etc. Even for me yeah. now, if you ask me to find a lawyer, I would be, I would have it's to call reason, someone. What yeah. is that app called? Mm. Sorry, what is that app it's called? It's called Court Roll. A Court Roll, and it's yeah. and it's the Court Roll. Yes, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. the reason that I didn't go and finish or carry on studying mm. or not studying, going to work in the law fields is because mm. of this access to justice problem. Mm. And it seems like people are trying to bridge that gap now, which is so beautiful um, mm. to be able to access justice in, in areas where you you can't necessarily. I have to be silent because mm. I can't go anywhere. But you can imagine as well, like you know, that not to just single out any kind of areas. But let's say, for example, you were sitting in Lusiki Siki and you have been abused and you wouldn't know where to go, who to call or whatever. Exactly. But if you had a phone app for all, you would have someone that would know about, okay, this app, then that would be able to get yeah. numbers for someone you can call to. And also sometimes, wow. as a woman that's been abused, you might just wanna be able to get advice by yourself yeah. and Finally. know how to con continue afterwards, you know? And that's something that you have the opportunity for now. Oh, that's technology inspiring. is amazing, that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. You're also coming up with a board game, no? Well, um, I'm creating a board game um, together with this fantastic girl in, in Free State. She actually was part of creating um, board games before for young children, uh, youth, in regards to abuse, um, alcohol abuse. Yeah. So we thought we wanted to do something that could be able to help young kids about the issue of abuse and what is right and what is wrong. Because I feel that, or not I feel alone, but the people that I work with, um, and especially like the um, I was lucky to have this event uh, last week with the Minister uh, for the Presidency of Women's Affairs, um, the Honourable Minister Shebangu, and she was also talking about the issue that it's not women who is abusing men, it's the other way around, so we should have the conversation with men. Yeah. And especially like you know, with boy ch ch children, so they should understand and break that cycle that we have going on regarding this abuse that seems to be going with impunity. Mm -hmm. because. It's not something we're dealing with, you know, and and that's again something that we I don't f I feel we lack a lot of role models, um, yeah. especially within men, because a lot of times that some of those campaigns that's been going on, some of the marches, it's it's disheartening to see that it's mainly women who comes out in those ca those marches, although mm -hmm. it should be us men, because mm -hmm. it's us who's creating the problem. Yeah. Um, I was I was part of this march in in Pretoria, and one of the few celebrities that came out was um, Casper, um, Casper Nieuwest. But what one thing I loved about him participating was that he didn't want to be in the forefront. He just said, I'm just coming as a, as a human being, as a capacity yeah. that I want to be part of. And that's the thing that we like. We like more celebrities and so-called role models to come out and participate, yeah. not just coming out because it's fashionable and then they want to be seen and doing something. No, you know? Because I want to do something about it. Thank mm. you very much. I honestly. certainly think you're a fantastic role model for Thank that. You. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank now, you. don't go anywhere because after the break, we're back with more from legendary Afro-pop musician Ringo. We'll be right back after this.
Hey, checking mic is just left. The building is coming up, coming back now. Now. Oh yes. Which song are we going to do, Ringo? Uh, kum. Now, Kum, which means me. 30 seconds. And me and you. And right. Me what? and me. I'll get you to say something while I don't know. <laughs> you think you said then? A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express live on SABC3. Get those phones out, get your fingers warmed up. Hashtag Afternoon Express. Ringo Madlingozi is live with us in the loft with a performance. What are you going to do for us today? Kum na kum, which means me and me and you and you. Oh, so ladies, get those hearts Ooh, ready. The ladies in the house. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe 
this for you now. It's your month. You know that for sure. Baby. Every day is a woman's day. You know that for sure, baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Yo. Wow, I love that. Every day is Women's Day. That's, That's exactly the message we're okay, spreading enough. here. But now, not everybody gets to see you every day, but you do have a gig coming up. Where can people see you live? Well, uh, on the 2nd, I'll be uh, in uh, Moritila in uh, Pretoria. Yeah. That is, uh, we are, we are we'll be celebrating uh, the spring. Awesome. <laughs> spring day. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, right. for sure. I'll be there. In fact, in we'll fact be I'll, there. I'll be I'll be. I'll be uh, you know, in Cape Town also, you know. We can't wait Stunning. to watch you. And thank you so much for joining us on the show and for watching us. Thank you so much to our amazing Thanks guests. So I just want to say quickly, happy birthday to Minister Gaba. He was the first one who put you ah. on. Boom. And there you have it. Good, Good night. night. Happy, happy eating. Cheers. <laughs> Great time. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Afternoon Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.